Grab meat. <laughs> yeah. Dead ass. Welcome, welcome. I know it's been a little while, baby, but I'm back. I, I shouldn't have left you like that. I shouldn't have left you like that, but I'm back. I didn't even really go anywhere. I've been right here the whole time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have been right here. I have been right here this whole time. It is your boy, Crab Meat. What is going on? What is going on, man? I'm living the dream. I'm feeling so good, keeping my head above water. As I always say, like I oughta, I uh, really, really am just trying to do my best. I hope that you're trying to do that same thing right there. Welcome to the Dead Ass Podcast, brought to you by a slamdunkjesus.com. You know what it is. You already know what it is. Big shout out to all the new people that have been following along, whether I've met you uh, along the road or at your place of work or you've seen me at a show or anything like that. A round of applause for you. A big shout out to you. This goes out to you and you and you for, uh, you know, getting on, getting on and, and getting along with what the whole movement is my name is randall thompson if you did not already know that if you want to see me anywhere right now i could be a multitude of places well technically not i'm i could only be in one place at once but on tuesdays you can now see me at the royal hookah, hookah lounge that is the royal hookah lounge on 1405 east sunset road in las vegas nevada very, very close to the airport above the Fresh Kebab restaurant. They've got delicious foods. They've got all manner of events there. From the outside, you might think, what the fuck is this? But if you're like me, you never judge a hookah lounge by its cover. Because inside, quite luxurious. Really, really quite luxurious. Don't let the industrial look of the neighborhood get you fucked up. It's nice in there. They got all manner of finger foods, wines, beers, fucking obviously live entertainment this Tuesday at 9 p.m. And uh, until further notice at 9 p.m. Tuesday, again, that's 1405 East Sunset Road at the Royal Hookah Lounge. This week, we've got Anya Malik and Chris Riggins. They are coming down there, man. I'm um, really, really happy to have them. Really happy that I... Uh, was kind of past the opportunity to have this show from uh from uh melvin washington I've, I've mentioned him multiple times before uh cool dude but he's uh he's getting out into the world a little bit more and so he said if anybody can host the show it can be you and luckily he had already had mr anya malik lined up if you don't have his album pop grits on itunes go ahead and do that right now that's a n y i M-A-L-I-K, Pop Grits on iTunes right now. Let me tell you, man, you spend $10 on a lot of shit that is not going to bring you as much joy as that shit right there. I really, really love it. I mean, it's, you know, if you want to download an individual track, do it. But just for the Kobe Bryant story alone, if, if you are somehow broke but you still deserve to laugh, and you do, Go ahead and at least get the Kobe Bryant story because that shit is fucking hilarious. So very happy to have Anya and Chris coming back to the 702. Uh, big, big shout out to uh, Victor Hernandez and shit, who the fuck else had me on the show? Michael D'Angelo, Kyle Blessing, a bunch of bunch of folks, man. They had me on their body bag show at the Hard Hat Lounge. That was uh, the same place where I did the 13-minute show. 
Uh, Victor hosts open mic there every Monday. That's the Monday Night Alibi around 10 p.m. But they did a feature show, and I was really, really honored and pleased that they had me headline. And uh, I was very, very happy about the the cannabis that was ingested. <laughs> and next time, next time I come, I swear I'll do my my actual act. But this time, you know, I had to. I was going off about human trafficking and and uh, you know women and all manner of shit, man. Sometimes you got to get stoned and just talk shit. But nonetheless, thank you, fellows, for having me uh, as a part of your show, especially as as a headliner and whatnot. It seemed like your audience enjoyed it. It seemed like your recording went well. And uh, again, it was it was an honor. It's an honor to be a part of that. I love my Vegas people i love my vegas bars i love this environment and i love it so much that i hang out in the cheapest cd nest nest the the illest of the illinist places and you can see me every single thursday along with so many other people uh, of all levels of skill and professionalism at the brand new open mic. That is the name of the show. It is not a new open mic. That is the name of the show at Motor City Cafe. That is 4080 South Paradise Road. Right around the middle of Las Vegas. That is Flamingo and Paradise. Again, the brand new open mic at 4080 South Paradise Road. Check that out. Yeah, man. it's It's been good between uh, the past uh, few weeks. Uh, the, like the turnout has been amazing. The the comedy has been amazing. And with it being an open mic, the drinks have been cheap enough to get through it. But uh, it's a it's a great place to come. I really, really want to give a shout out. Uh, you know, I don't know how many of y'all listen to this or where y'all hear about me, whether it's from other comedians or Bad Slava or any shit like that. But I appreciate all the out of town folks that have been coming out. It's a lot of Chicago people that have been coming out and shit like that. And uh, I appreciate y'all for that. I don't know if it's just the weather. If you like me, you really like me. Uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about, or rather, I'm going to talk about, and uh, we're both going to listen to this later. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I want to talk about minimalism. Uh, let me take a sip of this wine right here. I'm drinking red wine. I'm drinking wine. I'm making beats. If you're looking at this on YouTube, I finally got my my logo up here. Finally upgraded my account and shit like that. And, you know, success is small efforts day in and day out. I am nowhere near perfect, but I digress. Minimalism. Uh, I think that that is the way to be for me. And I don't know if anybody else agrees with it, but I just like to talk about it for a minute. I think that minimal shit and living a lifestyle that is not in excess as far as materialism goes is very, very liberating. Uh, I, you know, I live in excess in a lot of different ways, whether it's an excess of spewing the truth or, uh, you know, downing these brews. That's how I get down. Yeah. But s spiritually, you know, and this is not on no religious level at all, but on a spiritual level, as far as my own peace of mind, you know, it's all psychic in that way. Uh, it's my own peace of mind. I really think a minimal lifestyle is the way to go. Like, don't hold on to things that you don't need. Not so much that you are taking away or, or I feel like I'm taking away from other people or anything like that by having more stuff. It just, it it can be a hassle. It's, it's not, you know, if for all intents and purposes, it's not kosher. It's not kosher to be all about stuff you know there's a lot more to life than how much shit you have and the concept of ownership is to me something to be taken so seriously to the point where i don't want to be involved or bothered with the idea of owning something that doesn't fucking matter you know you should own things that matter so whether it comes down to you being more of like the diy punk spirit with it or just being resourceful and more natural with it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different 
aspects that can enrich your, you know, quote unquote soul, you know, and, and, and just your psyche in general. That's more what I'm talking about is, you know, again, it's just the peace of mind thing. Like minimalism is, is, is the way to be because, you know, then you don't have this guilt. You like, you don't have the literal weighing down, you know, <laughs> you know, you don't have to have that weighted feeling just from your stuff because I'm, you know, society and, and emotions can be enough already. Why would you put yourself in a position to have to actually physically deal with more than you need to, you know, especially in terms of your home and, and things like that. Like, obviously I'm not saying that, uh, you know, you should starve and shit, you know, I'm not telling you to be a martyr or anything, you know, let's keep it clear. You know, I am talking about as far as home living and, and, and uh, you know, by extension of that, you know, it, it it bleeds into your diet and it can bleed into, you know, your preferred method of transportation uh, if you can do it. Because, I mean, let's face it, some people do have to have jobs where uh, it takes a little bit more consumption and you got to be part of that machine. You shouldn't feel guilty about it. I don't believe in feeling guilty about anything you know you're accountable or not guilty means that you're doing something wrong uh you know if you're doing something wrong by all means be guilty but that's a side note anyway the other thing i like about that shit is it's cheap and nigga uh if i have not mentioned dead ass i am uh i am a not a cheap motherfucker but i don't i don't got a whole lot of money like that i'm making more money than i was uh thank science uh, you know, you know what I mean? In my own drive and, you know, I'm looking for opportunities and things like that, making more money than I was putting myself to make more money and invest more money and, and all of that. And, 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 you know, look into those things, definitely look into those things as far as, uh, you know, how you can make society work for you and how can you, how you can make markets work for you and all of that shit. But also, you know, being cheap, I plan on being rich as fuck one day, dead ass. Uh, uh, I plan on being fucking rich. And part of that is being cheap now and whether that's in saving or doing certain things and learning certain things, uh, that's what the fuck it is, man. And, and keeping shit minimal is a way to do it. You know, you really have to reassess things. Like, let's say you even love reading books and, and all the stuff like that. Uh, you can minimize just the space. I would never tell somebody to minimize the amount that they read. That's flat out ignorant. Uh, I'm, I'm firmly against that. But, you know, between having a tablet, you know what I mean, which may or may not be pricey at this point in time, it's kind of, it's not really that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? Just hit up a pawn shop or a friend or whatever, whatever, you know, a lot of people can just give you a lot of shit, uh, you know, for a discounted price, uh, you know, minimize your space, utilize your, your space very, very wisely like i understand that it might feel grand if you are a bookworm and all of that it might feel so grand to you know be in this big dusty ass place but but at the end of the day it's like that shit is big and dusty and and, and you know what i mean you can condense that shit uh in a way that is a little bit more economical and, and, you know, between your own personal space and, you know, your own personal mentality and then furthermore for posterity, you know, just speaking on a level of how society is engineered and how we, li we live and shit like that, like you're taking the first steps towards more efficiency. And, you know, if we're going to fight all day about preventative health and, you know, have to pay for people to have a prolonged life, even if they already have a disease or, um, you know, any number of things as far as like populations advancing and all of that shit, we need to change our mentality about how we live our lives and how we view ourselves in a world with, you know, approaching 8 billion people or shit. It might be more than that by now. I don't know. When I was 12, we just hit 6 billion. I'm now... Uh, uh, 29, you know what I'm saying? You know, going on 30 and you no, know, no, that's another 2 billion people that's just been thrown up in there. You know, that's a rapid acceleration. And then when you're looking at the things that are happening, 
just in general, even just tensions with, with people. It's not even necessarily an environmental thing if you're not somebody that believes in something like that. Just on a social level, logistically, you know, when it comes down to the bottom line, things need to be condensed. They don't necessarily need to be smaller, but there's a lot of information and uh, there's a, a couple extra miles that we can all, you know, get to trotting on. Uh, as far as keeping things tight and, and keeping it real, you know what I mean? I just got a direct deposit of $9.79. And I would like to thank all of the people that have been buying apparel from the store at slamdunkjesus.com. Thank you very, very much. That's exactly what that's from. Thank you guys so much. It's because of that type of support right there that I can... Uh, a fortune now have like a you know i guess bandwidth or whatever i can upload unlimited shit now so you know thank you guys for that you know what i'm saying your your your, your purchases help me out uh but back to why i embrace minimalism i'm a fucking dude man like i'm not anti-materialistic you know as far as an ideal like i'm not trying to out i'm not out here trying to thwart that or any shit like that uh, but I'm a dude, man. And, and, you know, having a bunch of shit and having shit everywhere and trying to worry about shit that is for women. Uh, yeah, I don't really give a fuck how that comes across, but that's a, uh, that's a woman thing. Women like lots of stuff. We all know this women know it. Women need stuff. Like let, let's take a woman who is a minimalist. You still have to account for the fact that you know, just hygienically, you, you know, or even on a level of beauty, like, you know, just to lump them in together, because all these things take place mostly in the bathroom, uh, you know, women have to have more stuff, they just, they just have to, you know, whether it's adhering to a standard of beauty, or um, just dealing with the, the natural way their bodies are, you know what I'm saying, you deserve to be comfortable, and it's, uh, little bit of a difference between minimalism in a man and minimalism in a woman you know the same way there's a difference in materialism in a man and materialism in a, in a woman um you know taking that admittedly heteronormal normative stance right now uh you know fucking stuff is stuff is for bitches dude you know what i'm saying and 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 uh and gay people, gay people fucking love stuff too, you know, like, I'm half gay, or I used to be gay, or whatever, like, you know, that's the half, the, like, my gay half has never been into stuff like that, my gay half will pop bottles, my gay half will pop and lock, but my gay half ain't popping tags like that, like, it's not going down like that, <laughs> like, I'm not, I just, I can't, I can't do it, man like stuff is for women women and children you know is that's who stuff is for and even children you got to teach them like hey uh you can't have everything you want you know that's the lesson that you have to teach teach the youngins the little ones the youths as some people would say you got to teach them uh you know you can't have everything man you really fucking can't have everything fucking you know, just in being a dude, it, it, it's ridiculous to me to be obsessed with stuff because I feel like it's an insecurity. Like at this point, I'm not I'm not trying to shit on anybody else or even talk about anybody else. But as a man to be materialistic, I, it always comes off to me as an overcompensation or you're just flat out bored, you know. Yeah, and, and and from that boredom, there must be some level of, you know, ignorance or just. Yeah, I'll say ignorance because I don't want to say a lack of compassion because with all this time and energy that you spend on stuff, you could do some shit for the world. Now, by all means, man, get your stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Don't, I'm not trying to be no hater, man. Trust me. Like, you know, there are certain, certain fields that if I had more access to the shit, I'm not going to sit here and, you know what I mean? Pretend like I'm not broke fucking and then just tell people who have shit not to have it fucking you know i would definitely advance more into uh maybe things like sound systems you know possibly like like suits and things like that but i would still try to keep it 
minimal and stay in that mindset as far as how those things were like uh packed away or as far as like the size of it or like what I was going to do with it I you, you know I and that's the whole thing this is a method of living uh and not just directly a, just tr- I'm not trying to call people materialistic I'm talking about materialism it's so and uh there's really no need for me to there's no need for me to censor myself or any shit like that. It's my show. But I want to be made clear, you know. It's funny how I'm talking about minimalism, and yet uh, there is a superfluity of words <laughs> coming through here. And you can thank red wine and old English for that. Not mixed together. Not yet, at least. That's right. Shout out to our sponsor, Old English and Red Wine Mixed Together. It's enough to make you shit yourself. Uh, Overall, though, you know, my next main point to this whole thing is uh, the reason I lean towards and prefer to have less shit is because I think it's a, a gratefulness thing from between even having random hard times and all of that to moving around a lot at, at certain points in my life, not so much now. Um, it's physically liberating to know that I can just pack up and go. Like, literally. if Right now, if I wanted to move, uh, I could have half of my shit like, mailed to me. Uh, or... You know what I'm saying? Half of it, it could stay here and I could come back for it later. And I could leave with enough stuff and be comfortable. You know what I mean? That's how much I've assessed what I need, you know? Like, I just donated some some clothes and uh, and also threw some clothes away. You know, I don't want to give nobody no bum shit. Uh, You know, and it was like, wow, even with me being... As, you know, so-called into minimalism and things like that, because I don't consider myself such, you know, I'm not big on the labels and the mantras and all of that, other than I eat ass. Uh, <laughs> I'm not big on all of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't define myself as one thing or another, you know, was, oh, I'm this type of artist or I'm this type of voter or I'm this type of, you know, nutritionist and or whatever, whatever the fuck it is, you know what I mean? Dietary shit fucking (laughs) you know but like that's that's one thing is like i like to just be able to just pick up and go i found that that lifestyle suits me even if that's not what i'm doing i found that i am more comfortable in that setting because i think it's just kind of a a learned and very appreciated sense of readiness uh also it minimizes distraction, you know, in a world of smartphones and ridiculous, you know, fake news, real news, social media, which is some kind of gray line. Uh, and, you know, I also live in Las Vegas. So it's like there's a lot of things, you know, if I have the money or if I have the time or if I'm invited to do it or I am bored that I can just go fucking do. And if you live in a city, you know what I mean. You know, there's a lot of shit that you could just go fucking do. And even, you know, just to add to that just a little bit more, just advertisements, you know, from, from you know, from billboards to bus stops and the radio and everything, you know, like just America, the world we live in, you can't, you ain't no getting out of that shit. It's actually another thing that Anya Malik touches on 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 Pop Grits, but you know he's he's funny about it. I'm just kind of talking shit. Uh, you know, minimize your distractions. You know, distractions are for people who don't know what they want to do in life. You know, if you know what you want to do in life, or you're having trouble trying to figure out what you're doing in life, uh, take that time where you don't know. To cut off some of the things that you don't really need to be doing. I'm not telling you to be, you know, perfect or any shit like that. 
uh, I'm not even telling you to necessarily quit doing those things, but reassess it. If you don't know what you want to do, reassess what you're, what you're trying to do overall in your life, whether it's short term or long term. Always recommend both. You know, I think it's good to plan things out in steps, i.e. a plan. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and, and uh, you know, develop your wits and your, your tactics as far as, you know, how you want to navigate this life and how you want to represent yourself as a bag of fucking bones and blood and flesh and organs and shit. You're fucking disgusting. Uh... <laughs> You know what I mean? Unless you don't smoke. Only The only people who are disgusting are people who smoke cigarettes. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm getting away from this shit. You know, get get out of the mode of distractions and, and uh, or, or just cut back on random ass distractions and get down to the, the real nitty gritty of who you are and who you want to be. And then maybe pick up stuff for, you know, for a little while. Maybe then spoil yourself with things you know with with shit you know uh because some of this shit this is they got delicious shit state-of-the-art shit chrome shit shit made of marble ancient shit that appreciates they have old shit you know there's all manner of shit you can fucking have and that kind of brings me to like my third point is uh you know, it's about the solitude, man. It it does. It's not about the amount of stuff you have. It's about the significance of those things. And eventually, you know, you are or you should be alone from time to time. Even if you're around people, there is a serenity that comes comes with the fucking solitude, man. And um, you know, you got to understand that whatever it is. For you to get that solitude and that lack of distraction to you get to that minimal point and and have that really physically represent your truth as a person, uh, you know, because obviously you should still express yourself again. But when it comes down to that that minimal piece and there's nothing more minimal than being alone. Oh, one is the glorious number. I don't know why. I don't know why I turned into. I don't know why I turned into an Indian child at karaoke. Why would that child know that song? Questions, questions. But what it comes down to is, you know, to put it simply, you you have to, you know, you get to a point where, you you know, you just gotta have that little nugget of truth in yourself and you're believing in yourself and not everybody is going to feel the same way about that in fact you know your solitude is very very personal to you and uh i think that's the first step towards uh definitely keeping your own judgment in check as far as how you view other people you know, if you can look at yourself in a very basic, bare way and, and even get beyond or beside right or wrong or good and evil or, you know, this or that or any other kind of, you know, dichotomous thing where something is good or bad, you know, um, positive or negative uh, and get down to the essence of what you really are, then you can actually understand what other people really are, what they really are doing. And uh, just do your part from there. And uh, if you don't feel you need to do your part, then then protect your shit. <laughs> you know, preserve your shit and go about your stuff that way. And uh, that's about it, folks. Um, those, they, you know, I got through the outline the way I wanted to. Uh, I didn't want to spend too long on it. I'm just saying I'm happy to be back, back to making the beats, back to uh, upgrading uh, the live performances and stuff. Now I've been, I've been working so I can up the internet stuff and that's been going so well. Thank you guys so much. Keep supporting. Uh, if you're wondering how to do that, just hit up slam dunk Uh, there's all manner of shows, different things you can do if you want to help me out because, uh, now we're going to kind of shift the campaign towards a better and better, uh, live production or rather live produced, uh, performance and, you know, some of that is just, you know, basic stuff from, you know, better mics to cables to backdrops to venues and, and things that can go into advertising 
And if you ever feel the urge or you think it's going to be helpful um, to share any of the social media stuff, please don't hesitate to do that. I greatly appreciate you for that. And with that being said, man, I normally say uh, I eat ass, but uh, this time, crab meat's going to face fuck you. Peace.